My name is Dr. James Weiner. I'm director of the Weiner Wellness Center located at 2419 Baldwick Road, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15205. Our phone number 412-922-WELL or 412-922-9355. And our website is drweiner.com, www.drwiner.com. You can go on there and sign up for the email newsletter and get advance notice of special events like this as well as a lot of free information sent to you. We're also on Facebook, two different Facebook pages, Weiner Wellness Center and the James Weiner page. If you want to see everything on there, you can friend us on Facebook. We're also on Twitter at DR, uh, DR James Weiner, and you can join Twitter for free. Okay, now before we get started, uh, we have this gentleman in here three different times this week. I don't know if you've seen this picture. We have it on the counter you can pick up. Uh, this guy came in October 2nd, the Weiner Wellness Week last year. <coughs> Cancerous tumor growing out of his ear. They wanted to chop off his ear. If you look at the bottom picture, that was him this week. And all he did was change his diet and take some supplements that we recommended. I think seeing is believing. Okay, today we're going to talk about joint health. Anyone here have arthritis? Anyone have musculoskeletal pain? Anyone have bone loss? Anyone on medications for any of these things like bone loss or arthritis or pain? Okay, so we're gonna to try to cover some of the basics. The first thing is you do not have a drug deficiency. Do you understand that? The drugs are artificial chemicals that never before existed in the history of the planet. Most of them were invented in the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So they're not essential for your health, like vitamins and minerals and nutrients. Furthermore, most people have arthritis and joint problems and bone problems because of their lifestyle. So what that means is you have to assume some responsibility for your health. Don't expect the medical doctors to know about lifestyle and nutrition. They don't learn anything about this in school. What they learn is basically drugs to treat symptoms. The U.S. Senate Select Committee on Nutrition and Human Needs way back in 1977 said that most of the causes of death and disability in the United States are related to our diet. Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, Jr. of the Cleveland Clinic in his book, Prevent Reverse Heart Disease says that most of our chronic health problems are from our diet. And yet you're going to medical doctors that know absolutely nothing about diet. So therefore, they're not going to cure you because they're not addressing the cause, they're addressing the symptoms. Now, we're not telling you to get off your medications. That can prove dangerous in some cases. But these medications themselves are extremely dangerous. The third leading cause of death in the United States is properly prescribed medications. Vioxx, which was heralded as a new class of painkillers, killed 150,000 people, and Merck settled out of court $4 billion in restitution to the families of the people who died or got injured from Vioxx, an arthritis drug. Painkillers, and I could have passed that out, but we have that literature opposite where we have the food table about NSAIDs, non steroidal anti-inflammatories cause stomach and duodenal intestinal ulcers. Tylenol, which any six-year-old can go to a drugstore and buy over the counter, can kill you because it stops your liver detoxification. So if you have other medications, your liver may not be able to uh, get rid of the toxins. Or if you drink a glass or two of wine, you could die if you take Tylenol within a day or two of drinking that wine. So this is very serious business. Okay, so I can tell you my experience of 45 years that most forms of arthritis can be either stopped or in many cases reversed. We also know that a lot of the joint pain actually comes from tight muscles and may not have much to do with the joints. Even if you have arthritis, we've had a lot of people in here, we work on the muscles and their pain goes away in one or two sessions. We didn't change the arthritis. How many have been told they have bone on bone on their knees? Let's see, show of hands on that. Okay, well, you don't have bone on bone in your knees if you're still walking. 
Now, the cartilage, which is the soft tissue at the end of the bones, can regenerate. The medical doctors up until recently have been saying it cannot regenerate it, but the body heals itself. You know, if you break an arm, like I broke my wrist eight years ago, it healed. Okay, if you're healthy and you get the right nutrients, your body can heal itself. Your body can rebuild the cartilage. That is the product called HA+. Now, not all hyaluronic acid products are identical. This is something I've tried to emphasize because people say, well, I'll go online or I'll go to a grocery store, a drug store or something and get a similar product that's cheaper. It's not the same. This has a patented product called BioCell Type 2 Collagen. That's where the research was done. So if you get something that's not the right format, you don't get the right ingredient, you don't get it in the right biochemical form, it may not work. So this is very important. That's why we started the health store. So you can get the top of the line stuff that actually works. And we have articles over here about New York State. There's a whole brouhaha now with the Attorney General in New York State is finding that a lot of these things on the shelves of even health stores don't even contain the ingredients that are listed on the label. I've known about that for over 40 years. That's why we started the health store. So you have us doing the due diligence, finding the best manufacturers in the world that are GMP certified. And so all of our products meet label claims because they've all been tested. And they also contain the most effective ingredients like our Super B Complete has the methylcobalamin, which is the best absorbed form of vitamin D. We have the methylfolate, which is the best absorbed form of folic acid. So these are top line products and five times a year we give you a big discount on them. <clears throat> now, if you want to order products, you can go on our website at drwiner.com or you can call us at 412-922-WELL. You don't even have to drive over here. All right, so the first product is HA+. We have had tremendous results, people avoiding knee replacement, shoulder replacement, hip replacement surgery on HA+. I'd say a starter dose would be at least three. You could go up to six a day. Now, healing is a process, not an event. These are not drugs to suppress symptoms. These are nutrients to rebuild your body tissue. That takes time. It took you a lifetime to ruin your joints. It may take more than a weekend to correct them, although we've had some people in as little as three days a week tell me they've noticed improvement. But generally speaking, you've got to give it at least three months to notice symptomatic improvement. HA+. Plus. Now, what if you have pain in between? What are you going to do? We have two products. One's called X-Flame, one's called Inflame. They're basically similar products. There is one difference. The one difference is that X-Flame has Crescelazine, which is a patented product that is fantastic for uh, inflammation, but there's one limitation. If you are on blood thinners or anticoagulants, we recommend you use the Inflame and not the X-Flame because Crescelazine does thin the blood a little bit. <coughs> So if you're on Plavix, Effiant, Pradaxa, Warfarin, also known as Coumadin, Sorelto, then we recommend you do the Inflame rather than the Exflame. But this has no dangerous side effects. It's not like the uh, steroids, the prednisone or cortisone. Anyone on prednisone or cortisone here? Well, she thinks she is. Cataract surgery. Okay, well, prednisone drops. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Prednisone is used for almost everything in medicine. You have irritable bowel syndrome, colitis, Crohn's disease, they'll probably put you on prednisone. You've got rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis, they'll probably put you on prednisone. You have asthma, they put you on prednisone. You've got bad headaches, they'll give you prednisone. You have an infection, they give you prednisone. It doesn't take much to write that prescription pad when all you have to know is one word. Now, the trouble is, if you take prednisone or cortisone for a long period of time, it has disaster effects. Ruins your adrenal glands. It causes weight gain, water retention. Dissolves the cartilage. So if you've had like cortisone shots in your knees or shoulder, actually dissolves the cartilage, speeds up the degeneration of your body, causes bone loss, fungal infections in your intestines, and even cancer. Now we're not telling you to get off prednisone or cortisone cold turkey because that can be dangerous. We're trying to get to a way of healing rather than treating. So we have the X-Flame and the Inflame. They are not going to reverse your condition, but they're going to help you manage it while you're taking the HA Plus to rebuild your cartilage. Okay, let's talk about bone loss. 
you can have bone loss for a lot of reasons. One of them is consuming dairy products. How many people drink milk or eat cheese on a regular basis? Let's see a show of hands. And you may have thought, because of all the propaganda on television, that dairy products, pizza, has cheese on it, you may have thought that the dairy products actually give you calcium and help build bones. Well, uh, we do have uh, a whole article over there uh, that uh, if you get it on milk in there, I have the article that shows that milk products and meat actually cause bone loss because they are too high in phosphorus. So consuming dairy products can be a cause of bone loss, osteoporosis, osteopenia. So we have a product called Super Cal Plus. I don't know if we gave you information on that. Uh, you know, there's a limit to how much information we can give you, but we have it free over here in the store. Super Cal Plus. This has over half a dozen ingredients that synergistically work for you to rebuild bones in the absorbable form. How many people are taking calcium pills? Okay, it may be calcium carbonate, which is very poorly absorbed. I had a patient write me two weeks ago. He and his wife went to Sam's Club to buy something, and they noticed that they had a sale on calcium pills. They bought two bottles when he took them home. He found out the second ingredient was antifreeze. And he looked it up, and he couldn't believe all the side effects. So he's been listening to me for years. He's heard me say, not all supplements are created equal. You get this stuff elsewhere. You may be poisoning yourself. I don't even know what the, he did send me the uh, breakout. I think it was mainly calcium carbonate. I don't remember all the ingredients, but there was propylene glycol and polyethylene glycol in there, calcium carbonate, which is poorly absorbed, usually from rocks. So not all supplements are created equal. So we have the Super Cal Plus. We've had fantastic results reversing a bone loss with that product. We also want to talk about foods, not just the dairy products that may be contributing to your problems, but you can have food sensitivities or food allergies. We have articles on that at that metal spindle near where we have the food table. Food sensitivities can cause inflammatory conditions. This is a big buzzword in medical research now about inflammation causing clogged arteries, inflammation causing irritable bowel, inflammation causing arthritis. This is something we've known about in the natural health field for many, many years. So you may be eating foods that seem like they're healthy, but they may be causing inflammation, whether it's headaches or arthritis or intestinal problems, et cetera. And they may be different foods for different people. So I don't have a one-size-fits-all. Some of you have read about arthritis. Stay away from the nightshades, tomatoes, peppers, potatoes, and that type of thing. Well, that works for some people, but not other people, because not everyone's allergic to the same thing. Here's a concept that I want you to understand. Not everyone with the same disease label actually has the same causation of those symptoms. So you may have the presentation of rheumatoid arthritis with swollen, painful joints. Maybe you have an RA factor in your blood, but we could have 20 people with rheumatoid arthritis, and each one might have different triggers for that. So we don't treat them the same, because they really don't have the same disease, they just have the same symptoms. Just, just think of, we'll have questions at the end. Just, just think of headaches. You could have a brain tumor, you might have misaligned vertebrae, might have tight muscles, may have food allergies, may have low blood sugar, may have magnesium deficiency. There's a lot of different reasons for a headache. It's the same symptom, but for different reasons. The same thing with any kind of disease label. Unfortunately, doctors treat them identically because they're not looking for causation, they're just trying to suppress the symptoms. So food sensitivities, we have a method of detecting food allergies as well as a method of correcting them. Even so-called genetic diseases like celiac gluten allergy. And of course we can help with environmental allergies, dust mold, grass trees, ragweed, cats, dogs, perfume, etc. Medicinal allergies where people have taken drugs and they go off the drugs, they still have the same bad side effects. They may be recycling that drug because their liver was not designed to handle this artificial chemical. Uh, chemical exposure, all kinds of things that we've helped with these food and environmental, chemical, medicinal, allergy, functional improvement treatments. Now let's talk about muscles in a minute. Uh, anyone have heel spur or plantar fasciitis? Anyone have a uh, tennis elbow or golfer's elbow or 
uh, frozen shoulder or knee pain. Uh, these things are usually muscular conditions. Now, unfortunately, when you go to orthopedic doctors, they don't know this. There's a two-volume textbook written by Dr. Janet Chavell, MD, who is President Kennedy's White House physician, called My Fascial Pain and Dysfunction, the Trigger Point Manual. I dare say none of your doctors have read it or probably even heard of it. I remember a few years ago, I went to the University of Pittsburgh Medical Library and no one had taken it out in 15 years. So they don't know this information. You think specialists are experts. You, you got joint problems, you go to a rheumatologist or you go to an orthopedic doctor. But you're going to low information doctors. They don't know about trigger point therapy. They don't know about muscles pulling on the ends of joints and causing pain. They don't know about food allergies. They don't know about nutritional deficiencies. They don't know this information. So you now know more about this than a lot of the doctors you're going to in the few minutes we've been talking here. So you have to understand that specialists are not experts. They don't know this stuff. Just like the last talk that Mikey gave on cardiology, most of these doctors know nothing about nutritional supplementation or diet to prevent or reverse various uh, heart-related conditions. So you have to understand, you've got to assume responsibility for your health and you must get out of the medical box and look elsewhere for answers. So, with joint problems, we work on the muscles very often because what do the muscles do? They move the joints. What's a joint? You have two different bones, that enables you to bend. If you had one solid bone, you wouldn't be able to bend So, you know, or move. You know, so here I have the upper arm, the humerus, and then the forearm has two bones, the humerus, I mean the uh, uh, radius and ulna. So you've got the humerus, radius and ulna, and then you have the biceps, and you go like that, and you bend your elbow, and then you have the triceps that straightens the arm out. So most of these muscles work in pairs of opposites, okay? When I'm tightening the biceps, the triceps behind the arm and forearm have to relax. And then when I straighten it out, the triceps contracts and the biceps has to relax. So what if the biceps is tight? You may either get limited range of motion or you'll get pain as you start doing the opposite direction because the muscle is tight and it's pulling on the insertion points of the tendons, which are the ends of the muscle. And that's where a lot of joint pain occurs or why it occurs. Knee pain, very often the quadriceps muscles are tight and you have pain into the knee. And what the doctors do, they shoot quarters on the knee, but it's actually this whole long muscle up here on the thigh that's pulling. It's pulling, and of course that's hurting. How about plantar fasciitis or heel pain? Anyone ever have that? No one raised their hand, okay. <coughs> Is it worse in the morning when you wake up? It's usually worse in the morning when you wake up or after you've been seated for a while. You know why? Because the muscles tighten up while you're sleeping or sitting. And then when you stand up, those calf muscles in the back of the leg are not relaxing. So they're shorter than what they need to be. And when you put your foot on the ground, so you may have slept with your foot that way and suddenly you're straightening your foot out this way and it's pulling on those calf muscles and the calf muscles are then pulling on the insertion point, the tendons that insert into the heel and then you have heel pain. And you'll say, wait a minute, Dr. Weiner, the doctor took a picture and I have a heel spur. The spur is the result of the problem. In other words, the body in its wisdom is putting down extra minerals there to keep the tendon from pulling out of the bone. And the proof of it is that I can get rid of that heel pain usually in one visit by working on the muscles and then we show you some stretch exercises. I didn't get rid of the heel spur. And as you walk around during the day, usually the leg starts to hurt less, the heel hurts less because now the muscles are starting to relax and there's less pull on the heel. You may still have the heel spur, but you don't have the heel pain. If it were the heel spur, it would be like having a rough stone inside your shoe. The more you walked on it, the more irritated you would get. So the proof is it's the muscles relaxing over a period of time once you're walking around, the heel pain goes away. If it were actually the heel spur causing the problem, 
it would get worse as you walked on it. And I see some nodding heads. They're understanding what I'm talking about. But the medical doctors generally don't understand that. When they're going to try to do an operation on the heel or give you a little donut for the heel or shoot cortisone in there, which is just going to damage the tissues. <coughs> so we do the trigger muscle therapy. The other thing is spinal adjustments and pelvic adjustments. Your pelvis can rotate. And if it's locked in the wrong position, that will create an equal leg length, which means that some of the muscles are being pulled, and that can create a problem. Or you can have pain occurring from, let's say, the low back, where the nerves are that innervate your legs and feet and toes. Just like so-called carpal tunnel. Anyone here ever had so-called carpal tunnel? It's repetitive strain. It's usually the forearm muscles are tight. Carpal tunnel surgery, wrist surgery fails 95% of the time because 95% of the time the problem's coming from somewhere else like misaligned neck vertebrae or tight muscles here where the nerves come out called the scalene muscles that go all the way to the fingers or a tight chest or very often tight forearm muscles. For the 5% that got benefit from the operation, we could have corrected that without an operation by just adjusting the little wrist bones. They're like the size of M&Ms and that takes about five seconds, much shorter than my explanation. So before you start having elective surgery that can ruin you, keep in mind back surgery fails 90% of the time. Most people have repeated back surgeries. Before you start doing elective surgery, you gotta come in here and let us evaluate you. Very often misaligned bones, tight muscles, or maybe medications you're on like cholesterol medication. Mikey mentioned cholesterol medication can cause muscle pain. What if you're on diuretics, water pills for fluid retention or high blood pressure? That washes out your minerals and causes muscle contraction, so there's a lot of factors involved. Okay, now I have to run off soon to the radio, so we're going to open the questions, and this lady has the first one. It was a comment, Mr. Martin. Okay, a comment? Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to say that when I stopped eating dairy products and drinking milk, I haven't had any colds. It's been a year and a half now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I used to be a big dairy drinker. She says that uh, cutting out dairy products, cow dairy products, she has had a cold. Yeah, I used to have very stuffy nose and uh, get frequent colds, and I basically almost totally avoid dairy products. I don't use cow milk at all. I use almond milk. Uh, other questions, Bonnie. What about um, what about kefir as a? Okay, now she's talking about cultured milk products like kefir and yogurt in, in small amounts can be useful because there's some good bacteria in there for your intestinal tract that your intestinal tract needs. However, a better way would be to get something like our superbiotic or a frontier biotic. Uh, a lot of people are allergic to dairy. We find a lot of kids with attention deficit is coming from dairy products. Uh, we find a lot of people with frequent colds, flus, a lot of mucus, so-called ear infections in children. They cut off the dairy. Asthma, very often related to dairy products. It's one of the most common food allergens and of course American dairy is very adulterated with hormones and antibiotics. That's why our best way that we have from Nutritional Frontiers comes from New Zealand where it's illegal to use antibiotics and hormones with the cattle. Yes? I have been on your HA Plus and I've been noticing the good results from it. The only thing is, um, my, it's in my left knee is the one that's bothering me and it's getting bowed. Okay, well, uh, she says she's been getting good results with HA+, plus, but she has like a bowed knee. The bowed knee may be from unequal cartilage there, and, and so then you, it ends up going on an angle. We'd also have to see maybe you have some sort of bone issue. And I'd say if you had any pain, have you been in here as a patient for us to evaluate you and see if you need the trigger point therapy? Yeah, well, I would make an appointment because uh, it could be multifactorial. You may have tight muscles or misaligned pelvis that's involved there too. And of course the knee joint's really four bones. You have the femur, which is the thigh bone. You have the tibia, which is the main leg bone. You have the fibula, which is on the side of the leg. And then you have the patella. There's actually four bones and a lot of muscles involved. And so you may need some structural work as well. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I had surgery on my the shoulder a couple years ago. He said it was wore out. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't, he cleaned it out, burned spurs, and he said it had arthritic symptoms to it. And he said, mm -hmm. probably down the road, I'd have to have a shoulder replacement. And I'll never have usage of my 
arm 100%. Mm -hmm. It'd be, you know, and I really don't. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, I got to force it up that. Like yeah. That. Well, well, first of all, uh, the limited range of motion you have in the shoulder may be tight muscles inhibiting the range of motion because the shoulder normally has the most range of motion of any joint in the body. should be able to do a windmill 360 degrees. You should be able to do abduction, which is this motion. Uh, I better get over here. Uh, 180 degrees. You should be able to do flexion, which is this motion, 180 degrees. And then internal rotation, uh, rotation with adduction, you should be able to get your hand up here somewhere. If you can't do that, it's probably because you have tight muscles. Unless they've damaged the joint itself, in most cases it's tight muscles, because basically your arm is held to your shoulder by muscles. When, it, when, I, okay. when I force it, I can make it crack all the way up. Yeah. Well, what I would recommend is you come in for some muscle therapy. The other thing is you need to get on the HA+. Another anti-inflammatory that I didn't mention but you got some literature on is the omega-3D. The omega-3D is purified fish oil. Now we have an article about fish oil being contaminated because the lakes, rivers, streams, and oceans are contaminated. And so the fish are contaminated and the fish oil is contaminated and a lot of the products that you will get elsewhere are contaminated because they haven't taken the time and the money and the effort to take the contamination out. So we have the pure stuff, the omega-3D, it also has some vitamin D because that's one of the common uh, vitamin deficiencies. Okay? Uh, so, I, you know, you ought to come in for some muscle therapy, you ought to take the HA+. Plus. Yes, what's your question? Just real quickly, um, I recently was diagnosed with osteopenia, osteoporosis runs in my mm -hmm. family very severely. Mm -hmm. um, I've been taking the once a month, Actinel. Yeah, okay, we have an article on the bone drugs. Mm -hmm. Actinol, Vista, Beniva, Reclass, these so-called uh, bisphosphonates. And let me explain what you're doing to yourself. It's not pretty. Everyone has a new body every seven years. In fact, you have a new intestines every week. You have a new bloodstream every three or four months. Your body's constantly reproducing every cell and replacing every cell. When you're younger, let's say you're 20 years old, you probably have new bones every four years. When you're older, like I am, it's probably every seven years. Now, you have two basic cells in the bones. You have the osteoblast with a B like a boy. That builds the bones. Then you have the osteoclast with the C like cat, and that breaks down the old, worn-out bone because this bone does not last a lifetime. Now, when you have a net loss, that means you're not building enough new bone. You're not necessarily getting rid of too much of the old bone. Although if you're on a soda pop, that leaches out minerals. Uh, you know, I mentioned various drugs. So what they're doing is they're stopping the breakdown of the old bone. That's what bisphosphonates like Actinella Vista, Boniva, Reclast, et cetera, do. Okay? So eventually you're going to have all old bone, and then it's going to break because it's going to be brittle. And we have the information over there on that metal spindle. I recommend you look. It says something about bone drugs. And there's two different articles there. What you need to do is rebuild your bones by providing the nutrients you need and getting off the things that wash out bones like soda pop, tea, coffee, et cetera, uh, refined carbohydrates. Now, how many bones do you think we had when we were born? We had none. We were entirely cartilage, and then over the next 16 to 18 years, the cartilage tones into bone. Now, the last place to actually turn into bone is this little bump below your kneecap on your tibia, on your leg bone. And that is the reason why a lot of uh, young kids and teenagers get pain there, which is called Osgood slaughter, because uh, they're maybe running, doing a lot of athletics, and they get strong, tight quadriceps muscles and then the tendon, the patellar tendon inserts there and it pulls and that area hasn't totally solidified into bone yet. So what you want to do is what you did when you were a child. You want to rebuild your bone. You don't want to stop the breakdown of old bone. And that can be accomplished with the SuperCal Plus. Now some people don't have enough hydrochloric acid or maybe they're on antacids. Anyone here on antacids? Prolosec, Protonix, Nexium. Uh, all those drugs can actually cause bone loss. <coughs> So we've added the hydrochloric acid to the 
SuperCal Plus. I'd recommend that you take at least four a day. And you need to get that article that's over there and will tell you about how these drugs are going to ruin your health. You do not build health with drugs. We're talking healing, not treating. A few other questions I gotta run off. Yes. Will a spur on a bone go away? Yes. Will a what on the bone? Bone spur. <coughs> bone spur. Well, yes, bone spurs can be resorbed. For example, when we work on those muscles and correct the pelvis, then the uh, calf muscles are no longer pulling at the insertion point of the Achilles tendon, eventually that will resorb. So yes, in many cases it will. Also, that can be a sign that you're not absorbing your minerals. So bone spurs can be a sign that uh, you don't have enough hydrochloric acid, you're not assimilating your minerals. Did you have a question? Uh, actually, yeah, can you <coughs> reverse um, the curvature in a leg? Okay, a uh, curvature in the leg, that all depends what's caused that. If, if someone has a bone that's deformed, uh, that may not straighten out. Now, scoliosis, which is curvature of the spine, where you have all those different vertebrae, uh, if we get someone before the age of 16 or so, we usually can help that. But if it's a single bone, like the tibia that's curved, it's unlikely that's going to straighten out. Yes? Torn meniscus can heal with the HA+. Plus. Yes, as long as you don't have uh, a problem where it's jamming the joint completely. I, I had that myself. In the early 1980s, I damaged my meniscus, my knee cartilage, and I rebuilt it. And we didn't even have the quality products that we have now, like the HA+. Plus. So that's the idea. Yes, your body can heal itself. Yes, Greg. Calcium channel blockers. Well, when, when you're on uh, blood pressure medication known as calcium channel blockers, you know, there's ACE inhibitors or diuretics or beta blockers. Uh, these are interfering with your body's metabolism. So here, here's what happens with modern medicine. They pre prescribe something to try to suppress a symptom. But those chemicals interfere with all kinds of chemical processes in your body that you don't want interfered with, and then you create all kinds of new problems. Those are called side effects. Now, we don't take people off medications, but generally speaking, blood pressure should be able to be normalized through diet and certain supplements like our seven flowers, which uh, Mike talked about last hour. And also, there's environmental factors toxic metals, we might have to put you on something to detox the metals. Maybe you're drinking coffee, tea, or soda pop, or smoking cigarettes. There are a lot of factors involved, including the artificial definition of what is high blood pressure. This has changed over the years. It used to be, when I was in school, 160 over 90 were the top numbers, one, uh, were the high limit, 160 for the systolic, 90 for the diastolic. Now they're telling people they have 120, 130, 140, they're too high. I typically am 140 over 80. I do not plan on taking any medications. We have a variation, a range, because we have different sized arteries and different sized bodies. They artificially have lowered the number, not based on any science. They've lowered it because they can sell more drugs. Now, if someone has a, a top number 200, yes, they have high blood pressure, and we're concerned about that. But if they have 140, 145, 150, I'm not concerned about that. Does blood pressure genetically run in the family, though? Well, that's a good question about genetics, and I could do a whole lecture on that if I had time. There's such a thing as called uh, epigenetics. This is a new science, and actually Dr. Weston Price, whose foundation I ran years ago, was one of the early pioneers talking about the influence of environmental factors, including nutrition, on the stimulation or suppression of gene expression. So there may be a genetic predisposition for something, let's say, like heart attacks or cancer. And that can either be accelerated or deflated by what you're eating and various other factors. So, you know, they'll say things run in families. Well, there may be a genetic predisposition. There may be other factors, like they all eat the same diet. A couple other questions that I've got to run off. Yes, ma'am. Dislocated. Well, you probably need uh, the ligaplex too to strengthen the ligaments because if something dislocates, it means you have problems with your ligaments, and if they're intact and haven't been severed, 
you need to get on the Ligaplex 2, L-I-G-A-P-L-E-X, Roman numeral 2, and I would take nine a day. Well, uh, she says she is swelling there. Uh, we talked about the X flame and the in flame. We talked about the HA plus. We've talked about the uh, Legoplex 2. We talked about the trigger point therapy. If you want to come in here and let one of the practitioners see you, uh, you know, we love giving you free advice and free information. That's why we're on the radio 30 hours a week. That's why we have the wellness weeks five times a year. That's why we give out over $50,000. Uh, of uh, printing information a year. That's why we've got the website and the Facebook pages. But at some point, you might benefit from seeing one of us. I know that's a strange concept. I have people that go to medical doctrine for 30 years, haven't gotten any improvement, and they're going there every couple of weeks or every month or so, and they never think, well, maybe they ought to come here and see one of the practitioners here. And so I would say you would probably benefit, as you would, from coming here and letting us help you. Okay, so uh, i got to sign off because i got to leave. Uh, we have health experts in the uh, store to answer your questions. We have all that free literature that I alluded to, the free food. Thanks a lot for coming, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.